Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. Today we're going to talk about the 5.4K footage from the DJI Air 2S and compatibility with iOS devices such as the iPhone and the iPad. Unfortunately that 5.4K footage is not natively compatible with iOS devices. Now the incompatibility is more of a software thing. The devices itself, the hardware within the devices is more than capable of editing and playback of 5K footage. In fact they can handle it better than most laptops on the market. Really it's just a software limitation that Apple implements within the Photos app and other parts of the operating system. However, there is a workaround if you do want to film in 5.4K and you do want to edit on something like an iPhone or an iPad, there's a few things you can do that will still allow you to do that. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So one of the nice new features of the DJI Air 2S is the ability to capture in 5.4K. Unfortunately, your iOS devices just natively can't support it. Now basically that's a software limitation that Apple has implemented. However, there are a few workarounds if you do want to edit your 5.4K footage, either from devices such as a GoPro or your Air 2S. Basically, you're going to bypass the Photos app altogether. You're not going to import any footage into your Photos app. You're going to use the Files app instead. So I'm going to demonstrate a few things here for you before we get too far into things. I've got my card reader with the memory card from the drone plugged in and I'm going to show you here what happens if you try to import the 5.4K footage. If we go to Untitled, I'll find a clip here that's in 5.4K. We'll just do this one here because it's a nice small clip. We'll go to Import, Import Selected. You're going to see here what happens. It's going to come up with a red exclamation mark basically stating it's not a compatible media file. As you can see there, it's come up with that exclamation mark. So what we can do here is launch our Files app. And again, we'll go over to our card reader over here on the left hand side. That's going to list all the content on the memory card there. So we can then go ahead and select some of the items here, some of the media files. I'm just going to select one for demonstration purposes. So we'll move it. I'm going to move it over to the iPad there. So hit copy and it will take a few minutes. It actually, the copying process is pretty quick. So you can see there that window's gone away, so it's all copied over now, so we can go ahead and remove the memory card. And if we go to our iPad, where I've copied it over, you can see here there's the file that I've copied over. Now I'm just going to demonstrate something here for you. This is another video file. It's a hyperlapse I shot the other day. And um, you can see video files play with no problem within the Files app. But because it's 5.4K, again, it's not going to play. So again, that's an iOS limitation. It doesn't allow it to play back. But once it's there, we can import it into an app like LumaFusion and then go ahead and fully edit it like normal. So if we go ahead and launch LumaFusion here, what we can do is go to our files. You may have to do some browsing around to find where you have it stored. I have it stored in editing files and there you can see it right there. So we can select it. Once we have it in the preview window here, you can see we can go ahead and play it just like any other file. Then we can drag it down to our timeline. Now you're going to see these lines through it. It has to download it to the LumaFusion app first. And that's because it's not coming directly from the Photos app. But as you can see there, it's now in there. We can play it. We can scrub through and do our editing. We can chop it up, add music, do some color correcting, whatever we need to do to it. So as you can see, we can import our 5.4K footage. We can bring it into LumaFusion. We can edit it. The only limitation at this point is that we can only export it at 4K. Again, I do hope that is something that is changed in the very near future. And I have a feeling it will be. When you're ready to export, you can just hit your export button, select movie, photos, and uh, you can then set all your parameters and then you can export it. So what it's going to do there is export it as a 4K file either to your camera roll or to the files app wherever you have set the export location. So the question here is should you even film in 5.4K if iOS doesn't fully support it? and you can't export in 5.4K anyways. For me, for the most part, no. I will probably just stick to filming in 4K, just for a couple different reasons. In 4K, you have full access to all your zoom features. You can also then film in 60 frames per second, which I like to do. For example, this shot here I filmed a couple days ago. We had kind of a spring snow, which is kind of rare for this time of year, but everything looked really nice because the snow was stuck to everything. So I took the drone out to get some shots, and I filmed this in 5.4K at 30 frames per second. Per second but when I play it back here I kind of wish I had filmed it in 4k 60 because I think I'm moving a little bit too fast I think it would have looked a little bit more cinematic if it was a little slower 
So in that case, filming in 4K60 would have been nice because then I can slow it down without losing any quality. Now filming in 5.4K does have advantages as well. For example, we have that extra resolution we can work with. So if we take this clip here, say we like it, but uh, we want to reframe it a bit because say this road here, this path is a little off center. We want to kind of move it into the center because we can only export at 4K. We do have some resolution we can play with when it comes to cropping. So if we bring it up into our editor here, we'll go to frame and fit. We'll first go to size. We can zoom it in a little bit and then we can change the position just like that there to recenter the path. And there we go. And now we can export it at 4K. We're not losing any quality and we've uh, reframed it. If you're going to export at 1080, which a lot of people do, especially for things like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, 1080 is a perfectly acceptable resolution. You could crop it in even more if you wanted to. We could like zoom right in. Again, we wouldn't lose any quality because we have that nice high resolution and we're only going to be exporting at 1080. So that is a bit of a workaround for editing your 5.4K footage in LumaFusion on an iPad or an iPhone. This works exactly the same on an iPhone. Now, a little bit more information about this 5.4K footage that you might be interested to know. Unfortunately, iMovie does not support it at all. If you try to import it in, it'll give you an error. It just does not support the 5.4K footage. Now, what's really interesting here, I've got the DJI Fly app open. I'm in the gallery view. If you decide to download your footage right directly from the DJI Fly app, say you have your drone connected, to the controller and you're going to use the fly app to download the hd footage it will download with no problem of course it's going to take a long time it's a very slow process it plays with no issue at all here but what's interesting is it doesn't downsample it at all it downloads it in the full 5.4k resolution but it doesn't make a copy in your camera roll like it would normally. If you download some 4K footage, it copies it to the Fly app. You know, it's available for previewing in there, but it also makes a copy in your Photos app. But of course, because 5.4K footage isn't supported, it's only available for preview in the Fly app. The other interesting thing is, which I'm quite surprised, I thought DJI would have maybe um, done something a bit different there, is you cannot edit your 5.4K footage right within the Fly app. If you try to edit it, say we hit the scissors here to trim it down or something, we just get a message saying editing not supported. So you can't even edit your 5.4K footage within the DJI Fly app either. Again, I think that will change once uh, everything catches up. DJI will update the Fly app to allow you to edit your 5.4K footage. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video and got a little bit of value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.